Um, I take it for granted sometimes because I've, I've talked ad nauseum in this group and in the messages about there's nothing wrong with us when we feel pressed in, right? So we don't want anybody hearing what we're talking about tonight and the power of eternal life and now judging themselves unrighteous if they feel lax sometimes, right. okay? So this isn't a word that there's something wrong with you if you feel lax sometimes or there's something wrong with you if you feel pressed in, right? This isn't to say we won't feel pressed in sometimes or we won't feel the lack come knocking on our door because we're in a world where there's tribulation. The tribulation's never gonna feel nice when it happens. What we're describing is how eternal life will turn our, our sorrow, our, our grief won't turn into despair, it'll turn into joy. Right? Mm -hmm. Our the, what eternal life will do will is make the light of the life we have in God shine much more than the darkness. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're talking about. So I don't want anybody to go away thinking if they feel this or that, therefore that must mean there's something wrong with them. Right. No, no, no. But we're describing what eternal life does, right, inside of a human being when they encounter death and darkness. Right? Mm -hmm. And as we fellowship, as we keep walking with eternal life, we'll find that activating inside of us. And we've kind of seen examples of this. My mind used to always be filled with my sin. My sin used to be the biggest thing in my life. Sure. I'm just being honest. Yeah, like yeah. every every day, wait, my sin, my sin, my sin, my sin, my sin. Right? Now, my mind is filled with, I'm righteous, I'm righteous, I'm righteous, I'm righteous, I'm righteous. My sin has become almost like an afterthought in my mind. And what I would say is, my sin has shrunk down to look real small in comparison to the righteousness that God gave me as a gift. Yeah. It shrunk it down. Whereas before, my sin was always tormenting me. But now it's like the manifestation of the gospel has shrunk that thing down and made something else bigger. That's the result of eternal life. Eternal life will also start having that same effect in you as you view your life walking in this world. Yes. Right? right. Once, it, it used to be that I was so consumed with my sin, and I thought if I could just get free from my, my sin conscience in the sense of my bad behavior. I used to think sin was just about my bad behavior. And I thought if I could ever get free from that, glory to God. Well, I got free from thinking God was always thinking of my behavior. But then I found I still felt condemned when my life wasn't going right in the world. And so then I realized, wait a second. The big thing here, the reason why my bad behavior bothered me so much is because it was all the time telling me that I'm in debt. And then I realized the world actually told me that much more than my sin ever did. And so <laughs> I was still left in the world, and the world pointed at me and saying, man, you ain't got what you need for life, bro. And you're like, what? It's true. It's true. I don't, you know? And so eternal life will also deal with that. You have two sides of it. Because the Western church has been so filled with sin in the sense of bad behavior, bad behavior, that was like such a huge... Um, stumbling block that was overcome when we got a revelation that God was never consumed with our bad behavior. And we started seeing that he actually has sent our sin away from us as far as the east is from the west. That was such a huge thing. But for me, I found myself still in a world that was all the time nailing me to a tree. Sure. All the time lack everywhere in the world. It had nothing to do with my bad behavior. Right? And what I, what I see is I kept walking with God is in the same way he shrunk my consciousness of my bad behavior he shrunk my consciousness of the death that's in this world, right? His, his eternal life shrinks it, it, it grows, yeah. and it shrinks it down. And I don't mean you need to get more eternal life. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's like a tree inside of you. It's a seed. The roots go down, and then it gives birth to a tree and branches and fruit, right? And so that's what we're talking about that it will do inside of us, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. see that example with... We were so sin conscious with our bad behavior. Honestly, those have been walking in the church. Don't get me wrong. If I do somebody wrong, I'm filled with wanting to make amends. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about my relationship with God. My mind is not filled with my behavior at all anymore. And most of you that have been walking in this church or been walking in grace could say that without a doubt. You absolutely 100% know God's mind is not filled with your behavior. You come to him with un, you know unconcealed heart. Right? And you know it. Well, that happened as a result of the word of life. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that word of life, in the same way it did that to you, will also cause something to happen into you where the death that's in the world gets shrunk down. Just like your bad behavior got shrunk down in your heart, that death that's in the world will get shrunk down in your heart. Because they both come from the same thing. Mm -hmm. Right? 
That's right. You see? Yeah. And that's why I'm busy preaching the way that I preach every week. And some people, why do you keep rewinding? Because every week we want to come in and nail death to the tree. Every week we want to come in and I want everybody to see the serpent's bite nailed to the tree. Every week I want people to see that. Do you know why? Because I want death, the death that's in this world, to be shrunk in their heart. And every week I come in talking about eternal life. Because I want that eternal life to be magnified so that it will shrink that death. Because when you put death next to eternal life, eternal life will shrink the death. Yeah. That's the effect it will have on the human heart if we will be diligent. In the expression of it, in the encouraging of ourselves and one another into it, it will shrink it, right? Yeah. Right. Does everybody understand the dynamic? Yeah. Don't get this twisted, because in my life, for so long, I thought I would get to the place where I never felt the smack, and I thought that was the end goal. That I'm gonna, I'm gonna believe so perfectly that I'm gonna get to the place where I never feel pressed in on. Now that is a lie. <laughs> and that will leave you feeling great torment. Now, I've talked about that ad nauseum in the past, but I just want to remind everybody, right? Because Jesus is God, and when he put on the skin suit and walked in the middle of this death, he swept blood. And so he did feel it, but what happened was is the eternal life that dwelled in him swallowed, put it in perspective, shrunk it down, all that kind of a thing, right? Right. So I just don't want anybody, you know, right. you guys know I like to jump in and make sure that, because everybody everybody has their own heart. Everybody comes from their own background. Whether we know it or not, many times we hear the same words that are spoken and we think they mean different things, right? Because we interpret things through our heart. We hear through our hearts. And so you might hear me saying one thing and I ain't saying that at all. <laughs> and so I, in the Bible studies, that's why I jump in when somebody says something. I'm like, well, let's fill out this thought. Right. Because people can think a lot of things. Right. It, right? Just, it just struck me. It's like looking at sin through a pair of binoculars. When you look at them through the right way, it magnifies it, right? And brings it up. Turn those binoculars around. And it becomes little teeny, teeny stuff a long way away. Amen. And it's the thing that you 